So hello everyone and welcome to my channel once again thank you to all my new subscribers who are joining me um, I really do appreciate it I feel like we're such a nice like close tight family on here I really love seeing when you guys comment to each other um, so this is a video where I definitely heavy suggest everyone who has experience with this um, base transferring and going to certain bases in your experience if you could leave stories down below because you guys know I'm trying to make this like more general so you guys know the airline that I work for but anybody Body, who is a flight attendant who's cabin crew who's going through the training process you guys are all it does we're all level with this choosing a base it can be so stressful and there are so many things to take into consideration whenever you pick your base so I just thought that I would give some tips and everything for that um, I have everything on my phone today I uh, was on a trip yesterday and we had like a little sit time so I went ahead and jotted down some notes for you guys for this particular topic so the first one and the one that can be kind of stressful and a little frustrating is not having an option not being able to choose your base um, sometimes depending on whatever airline you may work for they're sending people and hiring people as they need them so essentially you may think I want to move to LA I signed up for this job to have a huge change in lifestyle I'm gonna jump I'm gonna make the big move I'm going to LA I want to live that West Coast life you get through your training process or whatever point when they tell you where you'll be based and they're like congratulations you will be going to Dallas and you're just like at Dallas like no no no, no. I don't want to be in the south I'm trying to live the west coast life but essentially you don't really necessarily have an option so for me um, I was given three base options I believe like it was the first week of training maybe like day two or three it was pretty um, like towards the beginning of the process where I found out wow these are my base options now I did not know anybody in any of the cities that were listed to me um, whenever I applied I just assumed I could just fly in and out of my home airport I thought you could be a flight attendant at any airport and I would be working a trip out of home going wherever and coming back home I had no idea that airlines were based in certain cities now they're usually major cities you get the New York's the Atlanta's the Las Vegas the Los Angeles like big cities but every airline pretty much um, across the board that I looked up when I was doing my research they show what basis they have in every city so look at the airline that you're going for and see where they're based at to see your options to begin with don't do what I did and think oh I'm at you know flight attendants are anywhere there's an airport it doesn't work like that so you may not have an option whenever you um, first are assigned to a base but usually and from what I've heard from different airlines as well you can put in a transfer now you might not get your transfer straight away it could take a really long time I had a roommate or not a roommate but uh, um, I had someone in my class who I believe she's she started in mini with me but she wanted to get into our base in Honolulu now Honolulu is um, senior I mean it's super super senior in our base the chances of her getting into that base are pretty much zip I don't think she ever got in I know I saw her at one point we ran into each other but that that might not that might be where you want to eventually end up but you may never get there because the base is so senior because it's closed it's kept off maybe the base is going to close eventually so also consider that into to um, your, your factors whenever you're picking this to have a base option that might be solid for you but maybe have a backup and that may mean doing a different airline. Um, I know I talked to a girl who was an Allegiant flight attendant who they start all of their trips in base and end in base. So maybe if you are starting a family, if you are um, wanting to be home a lot, you have things going on, maybe you're in college and you need to be there for class or whatever, maybe try to find an airline that works with that lifestyle and you can start in base and end in base. So with, with base options, um, you may think you have a say-so and you don't as much as you want to. Another thing is um, the airline that you're applying for might not be based anywhere near you. So if you are not thinking about moving, um, keep that in mind as well. If you, if home is somewhere, if you've just purchased a house somewhere and you're like, this is where my roots are, this is where home is, and then you go to that airline to try out for it, and you're like, okay, you guys are only based here. Like, I don't live there, so what am I going to do? And that brings me on to commuting. This is probably the one I'm going to talk about the most. You all know I'm a, I'm a commuter, all right? Commuters get all the props for me because I firsthand have experience staying in base and not commuting and then commuting. And I still, it is a struggle, but it's still a struggle that I am willing to put up with. Now, as a commuter, you essentially, 
uh, you guys know that's like my favorite word um you are flying from wherever you are to your base to even start a trip so that means you have an extra leg on your own that you're responsible for for getting from wherever you may be in the world in the united states out of the country into your base now i get a lot of questions um are do the airline does the airline um confirm your seat on flights you know are you guaranteed a seat now this is kind of airline specific as well you are really responsible for commuting if you decide to become a commuter it's on you it's not the airline's responsibility to get you from home to work now there are obviously things set in place whenever i fly from uh, louisiana to uh, georgia i'm not paying for my flight i don't always have to sit on the jump seat but that is with the airline i work for how it works i never pay to fly from home to work however it is on me to get from home to work so I have to check the flights. I have to look at it, make sure it looks good, see if there's seats open, see if I might have to come in the day before, see what time I need to take a flight out. All of that process, you can't expect the airline to work with you and like bend over backwards to get you from home to work. That's not, you know, you don't sign, when you sign up for the job, they're not saying, oh yeah, well, wherever you are, we'll get you to work. No, 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 commuting is on you. So that is something I didn't really know because I did start out as a double commuter. I was going from a base to a base and then from base to a airline that was just a regional airline so we had the small like 50 seater planes going in and I did have a time where I missed my flight I did not get to base on time now I'm still here so you guys as you know I did not get fired but it was like this whole process it was very stressful on me it, it actually wasn't stressful like from my manager's perspective and everything and we talked about it and whatnot but it's not something that you ever want to do you never want to have a time where you can't get to base now with my situation um, uh, a, a storm had hit uh, Atlanta and then I was literally sitting there so the flight that I had got delayed so these are all things that you have to keep into consideration these things happen airline travel and and aviation is so unpredictable you never can do anything about the weather so getting from home to base or you might be on vacation needing to get back to base really you have to be 10 steps ahead when you're a commuter and think everything out because it can be kind of crazy um I, I won't say like specifically what all happens if you don't make a trip on time that is something that your airline will explain to you and their policies are different all across the board so um you know that just depends on who you work for um another thing is when you choose a base something as simple as the weather in that base the culture the lifestyle change in a base it's something that you need to think about um if you are going to just apply on the job, apply for this job on a whim and you're like, whatever, wherever they send me, I'll go. That's kind of the attitude I got further into training when I realized I wasn't really going to have a say so. Now, I chose Mini as my base and I went there because most of my class was going there. So I thought, okay, there will at least be familiar faces, people that I know, people that, I know, um, people that I'm like kind of comfortable with because obviously I had no idea. Um, what Minnesota was like. I had never been. The first time I set foot in Minnesota, I had never even flown up far that far uh, north was for base orientation and I'm like, wow, I'm really doing this. <laughs> like, Here I am, this little Louisiana, Texas girl in Minnie, in Minnesota. What in the world? And then I start talking to people that have lived there their whole lives and they're like, oh, this winter is not going to be a, it's not going to be a bad one. It won't be anything like the winter in 2007 when we got 60 inches of snow and I'm just like whoa 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 <laughs> pause pause snow <laughs> if there's like an inch of ice sleet anything like that in Louisiana road shut down school shut down we're on a holiday don't leave your house like it's not safe there's no salt trucks there's no buildings that are connected together so you don't have to go outside your your nostril hairs don't freeze when what people up north and how they talk about winter it is a different world this was never something that I thought about when picking a base I never thought oh Minnesota I need to buy snow boots and a heavy coat what no now I got lucky I got my transfer after only three months and I did not transfer out of the base really because like I hated the base or anything I literally did it to make my commute e easier because Atlanta is the only place that directs that offers a direct flight to the city that I live in so Keep that in mind for all these people that go to New York, that go to Detroit, that go, I think Indy's a base. Um, 
don't don't just pick that base thinking wow this is gonna be great also keep into consideration now you're gonna have to purchase a coat you cannot live in new york and not have a coat um you cannot live up north and not have snow boots like if you are driving your car up to your base you need a shovel to keep in the back in case your car gets snowed in these are things that are happening it's a lifestyle a culture that someone up north is used to but you coming from florida are like i what i don't own a shovel <laughs> So these are other things to con consider if you are considering moving to your base, um, the lifestyle of the base you're going to. Uh, keep that in mind and research that. Google will be your best friend. So that's another thing. Um, transferring um, bases is an option. However, once again, keep in mind that might not be an option that is available to you uh, readily and when you want it. Uh, you can put in a transfer and you may never get it. You can put in a transfer to one place, get to that base and realize I don't like this. Um, and I believe across the board you are allowed to transfer to certain places within like certain time constraints and everything. Um, some bases or some airlines won't let you transfer when you're on probation. Some will let you transfer as many times as you want. Some you need to be in that base for maybe a certain time period then you can put in a transfer somewhere else. So consider that as well. All Always, always always have a backup plan whenever you're thinking about this and it seems kind of drastic to say I was I was dead set on LA and now I'm having to consider Vegas as an option like what in the world but with this job nothing is consistent but change so it is very important to be flexible so if this is something that you cannot even comprehend you cannot even think this is the only place you can be based at then maybe um don't consider the job or maybe really try hard for an airline that has a base in the city that you're trying to go to and readily available like maybe see if there's a way you can check and make sure that that base is open um because it might not be exactly what you want also finding a living arrangement in your new base if you're considering moving there it's very important too now i know you guys um regardless of what airline you work for especially as a junior person fresh out of training a lot of bases or airlines send their people to new york um new york is pretty much a junior base everywhere i've heard um from legacy carriers from regional airlines everyone has a base in New York a lot of the airlines are based there and Air, um, New York is a junior base and the reason why is because it maybe you're covering multiple airports maybe um, maybe not <laughs> it just depends a lot of times you are though so being responsible for new work being responsible for LaGuardia and JFK might sound like oh, okay if especially if that's your first base you don't really know what to expect so you think that might be normal for you I cannot imagine doing three airports that is something that just thinking about it I'm like <gasps> but there are ways to avoid that and stuff but um they send a lot of junior people there and it, it it can be quite the culture shock. Now understand you're going from living wherever you might be or if you're a New Yorker then you might be used to the hustle and bustle to living in New York. And New York is a city that can make or break you. It can, you know, you can be thrown in there and it tear you apart. You can be thrown in there and you thrive like you never have before. But I know a lot of people go there with the hopes of thinking I'm gonna fly international, I'm gonna be a New Yorker, Da, 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 and then that that base can tear you apart and i'm i'm saying this and i'm stressing new york only because um i have heard of a lot of people getting sent there and quitting and i really just hate that because i think that that the the thought behind it when you went into it and your intentions were 100 percent good and it was great and then you weren't prepared for what real life throws at you um learning the subway system trying to find a crash pad in new york that is that is not does not have a hundred people literally a hundred people in it trying to find a crash pad that doesn't have bed bugs and mice and roaches and and all of that this is new york okay and it is expensive that is another thing that i think people especially junior people you're you're focused on the good and that's fine but it's also like be conscious of like your life as well um you might get to new york if i had gotten to new york and been based there on the money that was in my bank account i would have had to leave i wouldn't have made it or i would have had to reach out to my family and ask for help really but essentially um it's an it's an expensive base 
food and the cost of living in comparison to other places is a lot higher there. The people, the people in the way they can be a little bit more demanding and a little bit more um, confrontational and in your face and need things is different versus the South or even the West Coast. Um, I know New Yorkers are gonna be on here like, oh, we get such a bad rap. And honestly, not to stereotype, but just from the flights that I've worked, New Yorkers can be a tougher crowd. Um, not so much because they're like just mean or anything, but as a flight attendant and as someone in customer service, they're a lot more demanding. So it, the New Yorkers out there, they are used to that. You grew up with that. That's the culture, you know, but if you're a little Southern girl who's used to yes ma'am and no ma'am and y'all and please and thank you, you might not ever, you might have a flight where nobody speaks to you, nobody says thank you. They're doing things where you're like, whoa, manners but that's the culture so keep that into consideration when choosing a base as well don't just go into the base thinking about just the flying think about your lifestyle change and think about is this what you want is this going to make you happy can you deal with it now i'm pretty nonchalant so i can deal with almost anything but if you're a person who like takes things to heart you might not be able to deal but it maybe isn't taken into consideration as much either. If you are going to be a commuter, you have decided, you have swallowed the pill, you're like, you know what, I live in Miami and there's a base in Miami, however, I'm going to be New York based, so I'm just gonna make that flight. Um, or I'm gonna be based wherever and just, you know, do it. Your, the base that you go to may not be as commuter friendly as other bases. Now, when I say commuter friendly, um, if you don't commute yet and you don't what I don't know what I mean, the flights that you take from your base to get to home, you need to take that into consideration as well if you're going to commute. Um, like I said, I started out in Minnesota and there was no direct flight from home to Minnesota. So I would have to go through another airport to get home or to get to base. Now, if I'm a commuter and I decide, all right, I'm going to fly, I'm gonna be Portland base, you know, that's where, I'm, that's where I wanna go. And then I'm like, oh wait, okay, there's no direct flights from there to here. You have to look at that too. You have to think, okay, how many times a day is this flight coming from this city to that one? Am I going to have to fly in the day before my trip possibly? Am I going to be able to even have a schedule where I can push all my things together and get it all out of the way do I need to get a crash pad in that base what am I gonna do if I don't have a crash pad and I get stuck in the base am I gonna sleep in the lounge am I going to get a hotel for the night which that can add up so look into the base and their flights too if you're thinking about being a commuter because that can take a heavy toll um, where I'm based at now I did not know that one month they took our mainline plane for that month and only sent regional jets so I'm doing the thing I normally I have my routine the agents all know me and then I get there and I'm checking the flights and I'm like whoa, whoa, whoa why are there so many people in this one and they're like oh honey we took one of the planes I didn't know that um, so these are all it seems like a lot of information but definitely talk to your instructors especially if you're in training about picking a base um, and ultimately take the take the dive and go for it I tell people that a lot too which this is like contradicting some of the things I said but if you're young and if you don't have ties um, and you've saved up some and you have a little bit of cushion maybe just go on a leap of faith and move make that move to LA and live in LA for six months just to see what it's like and try it out or go to San Francisco and and commute to LA and and just live on the west coast maybe if you have that option just to see like you know every everything deserves to be given a chance at least once um but yeah anyways uh I hope that that was like a good variety of different things to consider whenever choosing a base. I'm sure there will be a ton of questions in the comments so I will try my hardest to answer those but understand a lot of things I might not be able to go into like specific details on because I'm, I may not know. Um, but I definitely do want to hear you guys commuter story so anyone who has picked base options or has any advice that they would like to give for other people um, just leave that in the comments uh, section. It doesn't matter how long it is. I'm sure especially if it's a different airline and from a different perspective a lot of people read the comments so that they they will like to take this thing in, into consideration and it's nice to be able to share that information um so yeah that's pretty much all i got i'm currently in palm beach and i'm about to go by the pool and hang out can't believe i get paid for this um still loving life still loving my job and yeah so i hope you guys are having a great day all my social media links once again will be in the description box and i'll see you tomorrow